talking about the naked bodies and how don't you feel a certain way. I'm like, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> when I paint a full body, I spend up seven and eight hours. That's the last thing I'm like, the last thing of my mind is like, I'm totally about art. I'm totally about spirituality. I'm totally about the moment because what leaves off that? Because eventually people get a wash away, you know, the paint. And that's a temporary part of it, you know. Whatever it is, is whatever we make. And it remains in video or pictures forever. Yeah. You know, so that moment for me is like everything. So I'm just like making the best of that time. So I'm zoned in, like all my, like, like everything is at play. Spiritually. Yvonne most... Kelly is the founder and co-director of the Step and Blend Family, Blended Family rather, Institute. She's a social worker and counselor who specializes in many of these challenges. And she's in our Toronto studio. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Rita. So a lot of people are probably feeling like this time of year, woo, made it through the holidays uh, and can bring out the best and the worst, especially when there are some tensions. Exactly. I think the holidays are always stressful or more stressful than any of us want. But when it comes to forming a new family and figuring out what those traditions are going to be and which ones you actually have to just continue, even if it doesn't make you feel so included, it's really difficult. There's a lot of second second guessing. I do wonder, too, because we've come through it and I, I want to be as real because real is, is the struggle. So certainly we want to hear about mm -hmm. what people have found the most difficult um, and, and the so turning is the biggest. Is that even a fair question to ask some of you? <laughs> The biggest challenge. challenge, yeah. I think the biggest challenge is there's just a lot of uh, bad information in general. Uh, not in most of the books that are out there. There's a lot of really good self-help books, but I think some of the cultural expectations are really do set people up for failure. Like what? So the idea of the evil stepmother, which is couldn't be further from the truth. I think most of the people who are trying to be step parents are actually some of the, the greatest and hardest working and best intentioned people. The idea that you know we'll be one big happy family, and so okay. expectations to their own family and feel like they're failing when maybe they're even doing quite a good job under the circumstances. And what about this kind of uh, the rosy happy, we're going to live on the street, we're going to be buds as these guys become friends. Or the, 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 the dads in the daddy's home become aligned and then there's the new man that they're both kind of eyeballing. Um, yes. Like how, how realistic is that from your own experience? How friendly the, the spouses can be? From my own experience of 12 years working with numerous families, I will say that it's very much um, not the norm. I'm not saying that it can't happen and that, you know, as we learn more about the emotional healing and sometimes the forgiveness and all those other aspects of, of the situation that need to happen, if people are going to be able to form those types of good relationships and maybe really great relationships. But at the beginning and it, at the end of the day, really the basic needs of everyone has to be met first and that's not easy. So if you go into it thinking we need to be this in a certain amount of time, then it usually uh, sets people up for failure. So. It's not necessary for everybody to be great friends across the different lines. Um, we all know what it's like to get along with an ex, let alone involve um, families together who are parenting each other's children and people that you don't know that well. Those are really difficult dynamics for anyone to encounter. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's something to strive for if you want to really help your children, but it's not necessary. Right, and I, I guess there's also the sense of you move along, where you are in year one, where you are when your children maybe mm -hmm. are five and six, maybe different when they're 20. Um, so this is nice. We can have a full conversation, I think, throughout Absolutely. the show. But the most difficult part, maybe people looking back uh, and the you know, thing they wouldn't do again, I mean, they, that's often how we learn. Uh, and those of you right in the midst of it, uh, really having a difficult time, one 817 8 Nine nine five. I have a ton of questions for you. We have a ton of callers. So why don't we just go and start? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. No, that kid comes first. And I'm sorry. If you're, if you're significant, you know, if you're in the new love of your life, there's not getting along with your kids. You can't force that on them. So Stephen, let me, so you, is that how old you were when your mom remarried? For instance, for uh, but, uh, they got together when I was about seven. Okay, if you're moving around, we've got a really poor connection, and I'd still like to ask you a question, so if you can freeze, <laughs> that would be better. Um, so they were together a long time. I wonder, I, mean, I, I feel like I still hear resentment in your voice, but I wonder if you oh, look... Yeah. 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 Um, but, I, I, it's not so much that, it's just like um, it said, it's, uh, a lot of friends would come up to me, and they, until they actually know the situation, they are saying, like, no one can ever... Uh, replace the parents. No one ever expects that. 
but there, there's a point where you, you, you got to have a some sort of relationship with the other person. Yeah, it's got to be two-sided. It can't just be one-sided. Was your biological father in the picture at all? Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, my, 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 like the one thing with my father, though, he suffered from alcoholism, so he had his feelings. Mm -hmm. But I would still, you know, and this is what I tell people, too. My father was an alcoholic who ended up homeless, and yet I'd rather spend time with him because I actually felt love from him uh, unconditionally than I ever did for my stepfather. See, there's a lot in what you're saying, Stephen. Um, I'm going to let Yvonne Kelly just maybe pick up a few threads of... Uh...